brought to you by Almond Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. Farmers in Wisconsin may recognize this voice. This is my Case 500 diesel story, and I've got classic tractor fever. Pam Yonke Welch is known as the fabulous farm babe to her many fans across the state. Stand by, I've got the details. Hello everyone, I'm Farm Director Pam Yonke checking in with some agribusness news. Brought to you in when March. she's not talking about the latest agriculture news or giving market updates on TV and radio. <laughs> Pam likes to show off her family's Case 500 diesel tractor. The Case 500 was the tractor that I basically grew up with. It was the first tractor that me and dad kind of did field work together, me riding on the side and going out with them to spread manure or do whatever. It was the work tractor on our farm. I never wanted my dad to leave the yard without me and it affords quite a bit of space for a kid to stand uh, yakking in her dad's ear while you're going out to do some chore out in the field. The Case 500 was the first tractor that Pam's dad bought when he took over the family farm. Its big six-cylinder diesel engine produced 56 horsepower at the drawbar and nearly 64 horsepower at the belt. Today, it's a garden tractor compared to a lot of them. That was a lot of power. There was, you could pull a four-bottom plow or a 12-foot disc, no problem, and it, uh, it could handle it quite nicely. Well, the thing that I liked the most was the seat. It's nice and deep, which is good for me, at least. And the other part is I like that it swivels so that if you are, you know, it's hard to see over the front if you're always sitting or if you're trying to get in rows just the right way. So then you can always lighten it up a little bit and pull it back. It adjusts pretty easily when it's lubricated properly. And then the hand clutch, I just like the hand clutch. It just makes me feel like I've got a better sense of how I'm moving it forward or how I'm backing it up. It just feels like I have more control as opposed to just a straight throttle kind of thing, so I like that. The 500 was one of the first case tractors to feature power steering, which helped with the handling. This flambeau red workhorse logged many hours on the Yankee farm until an unfortunate accident put it out of commission. Well, my uncle had it on the blower and we were filling silo big time and the black smoke was rolling and all of a sudden we twisted off the power takeoff shaft and that runs through all the gearbox and everything like that. So you, hey, we're filling silo, you just pull it over to the side and leave it sit till you had time to fix it. That's a big project and if you don't have a lot of time and if you don't have a lot of resources, you don't necessarily concentrate on that, especially when there's other tractors that can do the jobs you need. So the case basically got parked Although the 500 was pushed into a shed, the family never forgot about it. After Darrell retired, he and Pam decided to work together and try to repair the tractor. The first order of business was to find a way to fix that busted PTO shaft. I talked to a friend of a friend that was a machinist because J.I. Case didn't have the power takeoff shaft anymore and they wouldn't make one, so he made one, so we patched it together and put it together and the rest is history, so to speak. Man, he fashioned us our own PTO shaft. If Dad wouldn't have known that person or just happened to strike up that conversation, I'm not sure how far we would have gotten on the project that way. Once we got that in, then really everything else was pretty cosmetic. Here is High Tech Daughters on the internet trying to find these things, and he tells me that he found a neighbor down the road that uh, could handle the responsibility. So uh, the score was Dad one, Pam nothing. The Case 500 once again had a working PTO shaft, which meant after years of sitting, the Yankees' old family tractor was up and running again. It was so cool, not just to see the case moving, but to see my dad up on that tractor. It was still not painted. It was still, you know, there was nothing beautiful about it or anything, but it was running and we made it run. But it was just so cool to see it moving again. And it, you know, it wasn't like uh, it, it had aged. It still had that same sound in the engine. It still had the power. It still looked like you could go hook it up to anything and tear on you know, a field and take care of business. It sat there for I don't know how long and we put fuel in, put batteries in and hit it. And 
roll over once and it was gone. And it's just amazing to me even. I remember vividly she rolled out of that paint shop right around Christmas because dad said that uh, he'd get it painted for me as part of my Christmas present. So hippie yahoo! I got I got a case painted for my, my Christmas present. It was pretty outstanding. Outstanding indeed. Although the 500 no longer plows fields, Pam and her dad do take it to county fairs and an occasional tractor pull to show it off. Yes, sir, this case of classic tractor fever also worked to bring father and daughter closer together. Sometimes you don't talk to your dad unless there's something, you know, something important or, you know, Ma does the talking. And that was when I really noticed it was me and dad talking on the phone. He'd call and say, babe, I got this, what do you think? And I'd call him and say, dad, I think I'm going to put, you know, tires on. What, what should I do? Who should I? It just was really cool. Him and I spent a lot of time talking on the phone, just working out some of the more subtle details. No, Pam talks on the phone and I listen. And there's, there's not a whole lot of communication. Uh, I always say she takes after her mother. She never shuts up. So I just agree. Or if I disagree, then we get into a real discussion. It was a proud day when we went and got it. It looked, well, looked just as nice then as it does today. So uh, it definitely a uh, feather in your hat. For me, it's all about the experiences that I had, you know, riding on my dad's lap, him teaching me what to do and what not to do. Those are the kinds of things that make the case special to me, so that's why I always gravitate towards it.